America I love is a shining city on a hill. Not now, Sully. Oh, Sully. <laughs> oh, God, Republicans. That's your gubernatorial candidate? <laughs> okay. Doesn't really live in San Francisco, Dennis. Let's get it straight, all right? He's from the Heartland, all right? <laughs> Let's get it straight, okay? So, yeah, he made a gazillion dollars with the Bay Area startup, but he's from the Heartland, damn yep. it. <laughs> that was Friday show, Sully. Get out of here. Your Ben Jarofsky show for Tuesday. <laughs> September 14th is just moments away, but before we do this, we need to thank our sponsors. Sponsors like SEIU Healthcare, Illinois, Indiana, the Chicago Federation of Labor, the Chicago Teachers Union, and... Chicago Reader, chicagoreader.com for all things there is to know the city of Chicago, where to go, what to do, what to eat, what to drink, what kind of pot to smoke, it's true, and so much more, including columns from our very own Ben Jarofsky. Chicago Reader, chicagoreader.com, subscribe, and if you want to help out this program, you can. You can become a Ben head, chicagoreader.com forward slash Jarofsky, J-O-R-A, V as in victory, S-K-Y. It is Tuesday, September 14th, and live from my apartment and his attic, this is The Ben Jarofsky Show. Today on the program, Kelly Cassidy is back. I repeat, Kelly Cassidy is back. And David Weiss. And now your host, Chicago Reader columnist, Ben Jarofsky. Hello, everybody. Ben Jarofsky here. We're calling this Bridge Lady Tuesday, and here's why. Woke up to see the Bridge Lady had died. Her name is Veronica Wolski. But Dennis and I called her the Bridge Lady because she was the fearless activist who stood on the bridge overlooking the Kennedy Expressway and hung her signs advocating for one cause or another generally of the leftist persuasion, hence the nickname, The Bridge Lady. Actually, I didn't wake up to realize that. I got a text from Frank. Thank you, Frank, for updating me. I saw it yesterday. But uh, it was the front page story, my beloved bright one, my Chicago Sun-Times, home delivered as always, uh, by Tommy. I'm more than just a reefer writer, Shuba. Man, Tommy, Tommy. <laughs> Tommy do joints, <laughs> but he's like, I do more than a reefer, okay? All right. Okay, Tommy. Anyway, um, uh, the the headline is above a picture of, uh, of Veronica on the bridge next to a sign that says, kill the bill. Uh, this picture's from 2017, so I, I can't remember what bill she wanted to kill, uh, what bill that was. It may have been the bill uh, cutting taxes on the wealthy, because as I said, back then, Veronica was very much a leftist, a Bernie Sanders supporter, a big backer of Medicare for All. She couldn't understand how a country so wealthy as ours could not afford decent health care for all. And ladies and gentlemen, she was correct. I don't understand it either except we are insane in our fear of anything remotely socialist. We have been brainwashed by corporate America, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you've been brainwashed every bit as much as those QAnon supporters. We'll get to that. Back in those days, I had a show on a radio station. I can't remember the call letters for the life of me. It was WCPT 820. They, they, fired, oh. they fired you. Oh, yeah, that one. I, no, oh, I suddenly remember. <laughs> Funny how it just suddenly came back when Dennis reminded me. Uh, Veronica used to call in from the bridge talking about whatever sign she was featuring. Again, she was a lefty. And one time she had a sign denouncing TIFFs. It was a sign especially for me, she told me. TIFFs are bad or something like that. Uh, and then that station, whose name I can't remember, uh, fired me for, among other things, having a big mouth denouncing TIFFs. And so she put up a banner saying, hey, radio station, whose name I can't remember, bring back Ben. How about that? The, the bridge lady uh, stood up for me when I was down, so I will always have a soft spot in my heart for Veronica Wolski. After I got fired, we lost touch. She was one of those older listeners who didn't follow me to the podcast. Most of them, my, my beloved baby boomers, a little set in her way. Oh, ben, I grew up with AM radio. That's what I know. That's what I'm going to stick with. <laughs> Guys, I'm older than you, and I figured out podcasting. Well, just like that AM radio. Anyway, Veronica was one of those baby boomers who didn't follow me. That's all good. 
Uh, <laughs> by the way, baby boomers from time to time, they'll put up a message on my Facebook page saying, Ben, I really miss you since you don't have your show. And I'm like, I haven't died. Okay, <laughs> baby boomers. Once you've left AM radio, you have ceased to exist. What I didn't know is that in the last uh, few months or years, uh, Veronica drifted right. She drifted so right, she landed in QAnon country. So the headline in the Sun-Times didn't call her the bridge lady. It called her a QAnon backer. And Tommy Shuba's story described how she become a hero to the QAnon movement and that uh, her signs in recent months included message against pandemic restrictions and vaccines. So I guess maybe there was a reason uh, she didn't listen to my show anymore, other than the fact that she didn't understand uh, how podcasting worked. She didn't get vaccinated. She caught COVID. They sent her to the hospital and her supporters wanted her to get the horse deworming medicine. But the hospital wouldn't prescribe it. And I don't blame them because it's not approved by the feds and it's not certain whether it cure you or harm you. Just imagine all the litigation that could come if it harms somebody. And the more the hospital resistor giving her the horse pills, the more Veronica's QAnon supporters wanted her to get those pills. They harassed the hospital with phone calls, freaking out nurses and doctors and frontline workers who were trying to do their jobs. All because of these nutcases were using Veronica uh, to promote their weird theories and views of the world. When she died, a lot of her friends, of my friends of the liberal and lefty persuasion, reacted as you would expect, more or less along the lines of serves her right. Well, I don't say that. The British lady was very good to me, and I liked the fight with her. Uh, and I, yes, I realize joining QAnon is a form of insanity, but I also know that this system can pretty much drive anyone insane. And besides, the British lady had a point. Our healthcare system makes no sense. Consider this. When podcaster Joe Rogan got COVID, his doctors gave him the horse medicine. It was just one of the me many medicines Joe Rogan bombarded his body with. He got over his COVID. Now, I don't know if it was the horse medicine that did the trick or the steroids he took or any of the other medicines uh, that were pumped into his body. Or maybe he was just younger and more fit, whatever. The point is, our system of medicine is unfair and inconsistent and inequitable and wasteful and serves more often, service more often than not is based on who you are and who you know. Just like Veronica said way back when. Rest in peace, Bridge Lady. We got a great show today. I'm looking at my next guest, Kelly KC Cassidy. She's upset. She's very upset. She didn't get the highest rating uh, or the lowest rating, however you put it, from the conservatives in the state of Illinois. But that's not even what we're going to talk about at first. We'll get to that eventually. And David Weiss, our correspondent from the West Coast, will be talking about the special election in California. Yes, talk about madness reigning supreme. California has got a special election where Larry Elder could possibly be their next governor. That is freaking scary, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Uh, David Weiss will be with us in the second part of the show. Kelly, welcome back. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. I've missed you. Yes, it's been too long since you've been here. Uh, and I immediately reached out to you when Texan, Texas passed its insane abortion bill. So we're going to get, we have a bunch of things I want to talk to you about before I let you go. We're going to talk about uh, Alderman uh, Jim uh, Gardner. Uh, you've taken a stand uh, th against him and his uh, ravings. Uh, we're going to talk about what life is like in the, the legislature without uh, Speaker Madigan. Uh, and I may uh, get your thoughts on Sully. I give you a homework go. assignment. Sully, the new um, Republican candidate uh, for governor, wants to be J.B. Pritzker. Don't call him Jesse Sullivan. He wants to be known as Sully to sh prove that he really is from the heartland. Is and, he going to uh, drop his G's, too? Or is this just the <laughs> new way of – is this just, you know, the, the new version of G-dropping? Uh, round or light, that's a reference to our esteemed, not former governor, Bruce Rauner. J Jesse Sullivan, by the way – uh, wants to make it clear, Kelly, we're already talking about Jesse Sullivan. We're supposed to do that later. We'll so just we'll go backwards, it. whatever. We'll go backwards. He's making it clear he's not like Ronner. I don't know if you saw that clip. I'm, I'm, I'm different than Bruce Ronner. I'm from the heartland. He keeps saying that over and over again. So, uh, so he bless, really does drop his genius. Bless his okay. heart. Bless his heart. Land. All right. Uh, can't wait so to see the van. Can't wait to see the what? The van. Or, or what he does instead of Rauner's van to prove that he's just like one of us. Oh, I remember Rauner, the van, I remember motorcycles. 
yeah. yeah the, he, so he also had had a, a janky ass van that he drove around in, <laughs> claiming to be just a regular person. I don't yeah. know who he borrowed it from, but it, it, uh, it still looked nicer than mine at the time. Uh, that's a sad statement on the, the salary a uh, state representative makes. All right, Kelly, let's talk about the abortion uh, law in Texas uh, yeah. and your response to it. I'll Absolutely. Call you immediately. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think you and I talked about this when the Reproductive Health Act was pending. Um, you know, the, the, the level of pushback we were getting from more moderate colleagues who didn't want to take what they perceived to be a, a you know, a tough vote uh, at, at that point and, and really claiming that, that, you know, we were overreacting, that we were um, exaggerating the threat to Roe. Um, and this is exactly what we were talking about um, happening. And it was exactly why it was imperative that we do it then. Um, you know, the, the, the states around us and, you know, the whole southeast region of the country, you know, has been in a, in a hold my beer contest to find the most atrocious uh, reproductive health law that they can find. And Texas seems to, you know, be, be uh, in the lead at the moment in that contest. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a bottom, though. Um, and, you know, this very, uh, you know, clever workaround that it's individuals using the civil courts, not an action of the state uh, to, to, to take action against people uh, seeking abortion services or the people who might help them. I mean, it, it is you know, turning the entire state of Texas into the sex police. Um, it, it's astonishing. Um, and, and you know, the Supreme Court is is aiding and abetting in that effort um, by, by refusing to, to take it up. Um, so it, it is incredibly disheartening. Um, you know, but uh, I'm working on something here in Illinois that will – um, acknowledge the, the space we have staked out. We, we, we very intentionally made ourselves a state that made clear that, that not only were we going to protect reproductive rights for the people who live here, but we, we, were, we were here for people who needed to come here. Um, you know, the, the state of Missouri uh, has one abortion clinic, um, uh, Hope Clinic for Women uh, in Southern Illinois, serves as many folks from, from across state lines as from inside Illinois. And they've already seen uh, both there and at clinics around the state, people coming in from Texas already. Um, so as this, as this trend expands, uh, we can expect that states like Illinois that have made, made a point of, of uh, protecting these rights are going to see people coming here. Um, and so I am uh, in drafting process of, of a new law that will um, create a similar uh, civil right of action against anyone who causes an unintended pregnancy or anyone who commits an act of domestic violence or sexual assault. And uh, $5,000 of the award in those civil cases will go into a special state fund uh, designated to pay the costs of folks who have to come from other states to access uh, the full uh, spectrum of reproductive health care. So you would get the money under the, the this law uh, if even if the the unwanted pregnancy was created in Missouri or Texas, or did it would it have to be in Illinois? The the venue is is it would have to be an Illinois person. The act would not have had to occur there. Um, it, it but it, it would have to be an Illinois person. Yeah. But, now, but venue venue can is determined by the br person bringing the action. Now you have a history in this. Uh, the first time we met. I just became your fan. Uh, you got a bit of a wise acre in you. Uh, you must have given your teachers hell back way back when in the days in the 70s or 80s, whenever it was. Uh, I am often were, reminded were that my middle kid is the grandmother's curse. So when he frustrates <laughs> me, I am reminded that uh, he's just like me. And uh, so, yes, I, 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 I don't mince words, and I'm not afraid to... Um, point out ridiculousness when I see it. And 
it would be easy. Oh, okay, what I was going to allude to uh, the grandmother's curse. I'm sorry, I just started laughing. I never heard that before. I'm but about it totally to be, makes sense, right? Yeah, I'm about to be a grandfather, and I just so I'm going to put that at the. It is very exciting. I'm putting that in the back of the, my, my mind because man, I had some I had some days raising those kids. But uh, let's stick to the <laughs> stick to the topic, Ben. Stick to the topic. Um, so. It's kind of like a wise ass legislation on one hand, mocking what Texas did. Uh, when I and I was going to allude to the fact that when I first met you, you had s- sort of a similar theme bill, uh, yes. having to do with um, abortion restrictions uh, back in the day. Talk about that exactly. bill as well. Just yeah. remind people. That one. Yeah. So there was a, a bill pending and moving forward um, through through the process. It actually went through the Agriculture Committee. Um, that would have required um, patients to view an ultrasound prior to accessing abortion services. Um, And it it was a very popular uh, move across the country by by, uh, opponents of choice, uh, believing that, you know, maybe women were too stupid to understand what was going on inside their bodies and needed one more peek um, before accessing those services. And so I introduced what we what's referred to as a hostile amendment to the bill that would have required anyone seeking uh, treatment for erectile dysfunction to have to uh, view a video of the treatment for the most common side effect of uh, ED pills, which is priapism um, or the mythical four hour erection um, warning to your listeners. Don't Google that. Don't watch the video. It's really, really, really gross. Um, <laughs> and and so yes, we had that amendment um, as you know, pointing out the 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 hypocrisy and idiocy uh, of the the uh, ironically named Ultrasound Opportunity Act. Wow. Um, Damn. And and the the amendment didn't go anywhere, um, but uh, neither did the bill, uh, yeah. which was the point. Absolutely. You pointed out uh, the hypocrisy and inconsistency of the bill. And back in those days, uh, Michael Madigan was the speaker. We'll get into uh, that, how he uh, ran the the house. But uh, when I look back and think about it, I just I don't think he was going to uh, have the Ultrasound Opportunity Act advance because I think by then Michael Madigan figured out in which direction the state was going. And when I say direction, I mean left or right. Uh, So. That was well, he cover. actually facilitated um, letting Joe Lyons move that forward. It was sort of Joe Lyons' swan song. Uh, he was retiring. He wanted to to get it to the floor. It did get a floor vote, um, but it didn't pass. It didn't um, pass. Yeah, but he, he it was facilitated by the speaker um, because of his friendship with Lyons. Well, that 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 gets into. Uh... Okay, I'm as a curious sidetrack on the on the speaker and the way he operated. You're right. You're absolutely correct. He let like. If you were part of his caucus, he would like, and you wanted to to push this bill at Joe Lyons, and he liked Joe Lyons, <laughs> whatever. Uh, you're you're right, you're right, Kelly. He let it go. At the same time, he didn't twist arms to vote for right. it. Right, uh, but if it, had been, if it had been a Republican bill, it never would have gotten out of rules. Yeah, because at that time would. he we we he was operating you know, with more deference to the pro-choice side of the caucus. And now we have a pro-choice majority, an overwhelmingly pro-choice majority, um, which is great. Yeah, so I I can't say with any degree of certainty what Michael Madigan's views on choice are. Um, I I think I've always thought that Michael Madigan essentially sees every issue uh, as a political issue, and he's always trying to weigh the benefits uh, to his caucus and his control. 100%. Yeah, uh, there, there, yeah. there's no policy weight. It, it's, it's all. What does this do for our politics? That's, that's very true. Yeah. So at the time, I took it as a poke fun at them, Bill. I didn't take it serious uh, that like it would ever pass, for instance. But this time around, I kind of have a different attitude about it. I feel like the, the. It's more of a dangerous time in many ways, Kelly, politically speaking. Uh, the far right is 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 just nakedly bold in yeah. its ambitions. Uh, and it's almost like you have to fight fire with fire. Do you view this as a satirical bill or are you serious about it? Why not both? You know, I, I yes, I am pointing out the idiocy, um, the the 
yes, the idiocy of this approach. Um, but if this is our new normal, as you say, we have to fight fire with fire. Um, I don't believe we should be turning our, our people against each other and, and setting up snitch lines, um, which, by the way, my, my son is a computer uh, kid, a computer engineering kid, and, and has been sharing the stories of the ways the youth have been messing with their their uh, snitch lines in Texas. It's been pretty fun. Um, but uh, and so, yes, the children will save us. Uh, but but it is, you know, if this is the new normal, then you're right. Fighting fire with fire is, is what we have to do. And, and if if this is the means by which we can provide support to folks who have to flee their home state to get health care, then that's what we're going to have to do. And uh, so do you have any sense of how many, uh, I know you haven't officially introduced the bill. Yeah, but... it hasn't been introduced yet. So we, I will, we, we'll see. I don't know. Um, you know, as I said, we have a, we have a solid pro-choice majority. Um, so I imagine that uh, I'll have company. Um, but, uh, but we'll see what, what it, uh, what form that takes. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Solid pro-choice, uh, majority in the house of representatives, uh, Terry Cosgrove, as you know, comes on the show all the time and to sort of warn listeners that if you uh, get lazy, get lax, you don't keep at it. Uh, this will go, the state will flip. It'll become a red state and Absolutely. they'll move. To, and I actually agree with T TC on this one. 100%. But on this point, One, I'm with him. I agree yes. with him completely. I have watched the the southern part of our state that used to have, um, you know, really solid Democratic representation, not always pro-choice representation, but solid Democratic representation, flip those districts one by one to the point where there are very few members from southern Illinois in our caucus anymore. Um, and, and the truth is, you know, whether they voted pro-choice or not, they voted for this, the, 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 they voted for the speaker that kept us in a pro-choice majority, if you will. Um, and so as that territory, as we lose that territory, we've obviously gained in the suburbs, but you know, we don't know if those gains are permanent. Um, and so he's absolutely right to ring those, ring those alarm bells. Um, we can't sleep on this majority. We can't assume this is always going to be a blue island in a sea of red. Um, I, I worry about that constantly. Um, you know, the, the, we've got we've got these super minority uh, Republican caucuses that are fighting each other. But if they get their shit together, then we'll have a problem. Yeah. Uh, well, let's bring it back at this moment uh, to Jesse Sullivan and uh, Darren Bailey and the Republicans running for governor. Uh, Darren Bailey, your old colleague in the House, now a state senator, is running as sort of the MAGA candidate. Uh, just he's. He's not ashamed. He's just maga, maga, maga yeah. from the from the the morning moment he wakes in the morning to the to the moment he goes to, to sleep. Uh, Jesse uh, Sullivan, a little slicker, and I just wrote about this. This is fresh in my mind. Jesse Sullivan uh, is a gazillionaire, made his money um, with a Bay Area company, and now he claims he's from the heartland. Uh, but he's running as kind of like a moderate, <laughs> in quotes. And I, I just he's he makes it clear he's vehemently against abortion. All right. Uh, but what he says, as opposed to Darren Bailey, is like a nuanced. It's the only word, I, you know, politically yeah. nuanced. So he'll say something. He'll say, I don't have the votes in the House, so it's not an issue. And so that's kind of his way. I mean, he's even, this is how far to the right the Republicans have moved. He's the Bruce Rauner light. When Bruce Rauner ran in 2014, he ran as a corporatist who had, was going to use his power to destroy unions, lower taxes on the wealthy, and cut pensions, and pay for those tax breaks by cutting pensions. That was his essential economic yeah. message, Kelly. But to win over women voters uh, in DuPage and Lake and Cook, he said, I'm pro-choice. And then he got well, clobbered. Well, he kind of did, and then he didn't. And then, yeah, he tried to. He really tried to do the same thing that that – our good pal Sully here is doing, which is try to pretend it's not an issue. Um, but but wait, but, let but me then just he say, stepped in it. He did step yeah. in it big time. He he. So maybe Sully's trying to learn the lesson. Yes. Bruce, like yeah. use nuance from the start. Don't try to use nuance later. Um, but that's that's real. And if those those suburban voters who are you know more moderate on this issue feel like okay, he, it's not really a threat. I can go back to voting my pocketbook. There's the problem that Terry's 
referencing, right? There is the the the, the problem that that shrinks our majority um, because that you know we we've only had these suburban seats for a couple cycles. We have to know that we're going to keep them. Yeah. Uh, b- by the way, I just, uh, Terry would be really remiss of me if I didn't point this out. Bruce Rauner in 2014 in his campaign uh, took out an ad in a tribute uh, in which Bruce Rauner's wife was prominently featured and made it clear this will not be an issue. Bruce has been pro-choice and he had given money to Planned Parenthood yeah, yeah. as opposed to this kid, Sully, who's made it clear he's anti-abortion, but he doesn't have the votes, which this is Kelly. The nuance has moved so right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gone from, yeah. I'm not going to Bruce runner. I've been pro-choice my whole life. I'm just going to stay out of this to, well, I don't have the votes, so it's not an issue. Right. Right. Which is which, also not like, th- this is the same thing though. Like it, at some level the the error is the same, which is, you know, for pro-choice voters, there ain't no gray. And, and frankly, for anti-choice voters, there ain't no gray. Yeah. So for, for the folks here that he wants to hear him say, I'm staunchly pro-life, there can't be a but in that sentence, right? And, and similarly, for those of us who are pro-choice, I don't care what comes after the but, right? Like, so for the pro-life folks, what comes after the but isn't relative, relevant to them. They want you to be a warrior. For me doesn't matter what comes after the butt. You, you told me who you are and what you're going to do. Um, so, so this is not really a segment of the electorate that, that does nuance. All right. Speaking of nuance and messaging, I have to ask you this. Uh, as a satirist, as a wise acre, you must get some, I don't know, bitter, ironic, satisfaction at listening to the rhetoric employed by the anti-vaxxers which is freaking stolen literally stolen from the pro-choice movement the same people who were supporting oh, the uh it's amazing yeah oh and i have about- the video of representative andrew chesney screaming my body my choice on the house floor i ordered that the minute the words were out of his mouth <laughs> um but yeah it, it is kind of wild um and, and, you know, this is where, you know, the fun stops, though, because yeah. their capacity to not really care about inconsistency, not really care about truth or the lack thereof, um, they're just going to roll with it. And it, it's amazing to me. It, it's amazing to see it. Like you were you frankly, you were talking about the bridge lady. I was thinking about my former chief of staff who, you know, similarly went down that rabbit hole. Um, and, you know, emphasis on the former, uh, because, you know, I, I, I could not imagine how this person who had, you know, worked for me for three years suddenly believed these things, but it happens. Um, and there's this willingness to completely suspend d- disbelief and live in the rabbit hole. And it's mind boggling. Yeah, it is mind boggling. And, uh, I, I, you know, in the case of the bridge lady, I rem- I could kind of see it. Well, I haven't talked to her in a long time. Like I said, after I left the radio station, left the radio station, after I got fired, uh, she was out of my life. But I remember the conversations I had with her. This is like in 2018. She was, she was um, so far more critical of Hillary Clinton than of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And that's a telltale sign. You got yep. what I'm saying, Kelly? That's yep. a telltale sign. I mean, that's where I'm we no started. Fan of, that's yeah. where we started with Matt. Yeah. Oh, d- hating on Hillary. Yeah. Uh, I, I listen, man. I got no love for Bill Clinton, Kelly. I, you and I, I don't think we've ever had the Bill Clinton conversation. How I, I believe Bill Clinton's just whole approach to politics has really hurt the Democratic Party, to put it mildly. And I'm really enjoying uh, Ryan Murphy's. Uh, Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton series, which uh, was only one episode drop, but I, I really enjoyed the first one. Uh, so I, I have no love for Bill Clinton, but yeah. there, there is something really frustrating and maddening about the Democrats' inability to address some of these just fundamental in, I- issues of inequity in our country. Uh, and I think it does propel people, to some people, down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. I mean, watching the the... Uh, the the internet meltdown over AOC's dress, 
it has been an interesting illustration of this. You know, the 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 she's getting attacked from the left for being at the Met Gala. She's getting attacked from the right for being at the Met Gala. Like, you know, the 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 old joke that I'm so far left, I reach around and you know poke the folks on the right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it there's some reality there, and part of my uh, part of my dissatisfaction over my uh, American Conservative Union score is that I I vote for things that libertarians vote for, um, and that that screws up my score. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get to that. I want to cl- uh, close up uh, the abortion conversation with this. Uh, <laughs> already, Kelly explaining her score. She's so mad at you, Marcus Evans, that you got to zero and she got to fourteen. Uh, <laughs> all right, before we get to that. Uh, I gotta ask you, you put on your, uh, you're, uh, a committee man or committee woman, excuse me, from the, the 49th ward. Oh, we, so we call each other committee person. Now we changed the law. Oh, okay. Committee persons. Yes. We've it's degendered. Really <laughs> okay. It's a committee thing. people, committee person. I like committee uh, critter. Committee critter. That has a alliteration. Uh, all right. Committee critter. You're a committee critter, uh, from the 49th ward, uh, lefty country. If there ever was one, uh, in the city of Chicago, so you follow politics, uh, in your humble opinion, does the Texas law, I understand that the Republicans of Texas are playing to their MAGA core, their MAGA mm-hmm. base. I, I understand that. But when you look at the whole map, you know, you, you, back away from the core. Uh, do you think this is a winning strategy? Just if you can distance yourself from the, the feelings and passions you have about the yeah. issue, just, just think of it strategically. Do you view it as a winning strategy uh, or a potentially losing strategy for the Republicans? Well, I think it has to be evaluated in two ways, right? This was designed not so much as a political strategy as it was a legal strategy by someone who's been staring at, at Roe, you know, looking for, you know, as if it was runes that could give him a map to overturn it. Um, so, so, you know, from that perspective, that's, we know that's what birthed this. Um, in terms of the political strategy, you know, we've seen it play out time and time again, in particular, you know, I'm going to go back to turn and do page blue, you know, attacks on these kinds of issues tend to motivate uh, voters that, that flip blue. Um, you know, so it, it really becomes a question is, you know, in Texas in particular, and, and the, the Democratic Party of the 49th Ward is actually for our next monthly meeting having some folks who are on the ground in Texas uh, participate in our meeting to talk about ways that we can be helpful um, from states like ours to states like that where folks are doing the, this real battle every day. Um, but, you know, is... The, the political landscape such that, you know, who's hungrier, right? The red meat for the base or our base who who will take this as red meat as well. Um, you know, and I, I hope um, as we move into midterms that are traditionally not great for the party in power, um, you know, I hope as we move into those midterms that, that this is a wake-up call to folks who may be sleeping on some of these rights. Well, we'll get into that traditionally not good for the party of power. I've got to hope and think, and we'll I'll be talking about the special recall election in California a little bit because it relates, but I got to hope and think that people aren't thinking in conventional terms anymore. Uh, Kelly, you mentioned going to sleep. One of my great criticisms of the Democratic Party after the triumph of Obama's win in 2008 is that they did go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, My sense of it, is that we have a different electorate uh, here in 20. Nobody rejoiced. I mean, there was a, sigh, a huge sigh of relief when Trump was defeated in 2020, but Trump never conceded. Within right. a month, they were there was an insurrection at the Capitol. Uh, it's 50-50 tie. Everybody knows the, that, or at least everybody who follows passionately knows that the right. dynamics of this thing are very close. It's To me, it's a different political landscape Uh now than it was in 2010. Yeah. So I'm not sure the conventional wisdom uh, prevails at this. Your mouth to God's ears, man. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I hope you're yeah. right. I really do. I, I worry, um, but it's my job to worry, yeah. um, you know, both as as someone who's, you know, life's work is, you know, the, these issues of justice um, and also someone who's, you know, task is to get voters motivated. Um, so I, I do hope that you're right. And I, and I think there's a lot of logic to that. 
Um, I, I, you know, there's also the, the fatigue of constantly being at war that, that, you know, we see, um, over the last, you know, five years. Well, I'll just point out about that. I, the other side never seems to be fatigued. They never get tired, man. They don't. Yeah. yeah. I, they don't. I just, you know, and I don't get tired. I've been writing about politics since 1981. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's either you're into it or you're not into it. It's, uh, but I hear you. Oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, Democrats. Oh, I'm so tired. Yeah. Uh, man, those guys in Texas aren't tired. That's no. for sure. Uh, all right, uh, let's uh, shift gears to a little local conversation. Uh, the alderman, uh, Jim Gardner, of the uh, 45th Ward, uh, has exposed himself to be just one of the biggest jerks. In the, and I, and I've, I'm a student of the Chicago City Council. He may be the single greatest jerk in the Chicago City Council. Uh, I, got, you know, I said that. And that's Kelly. saying something. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and I've had guys who I really enjoyed their company and talking politics that I didn't agree with them. You know, I'm thinking yeah. of you, Bernie Stone, may you rest in peace. He would always call me up and criticize me for something I did wrong, which I never <laughs> thought I did wrong. Uh, but this guy is just, there's something really twisted and weird about him. And uh, we had Ann Emerson on the show last week talking about the texts uh, that he yeah. wrote, which he uh, called her a bitch and just his rants against Joanna Klonsky, who's another uh, frequent guest in the show, and just uh, constituents of his. I mean, the man is just, I don't know, he seems he, out of control. So go ahead. He ain't go right. Ahead. He just ain't right, as we used to say in the South. Dude just ain't right. Um, you know, I, I, when I read all of this, and, and, you know, someone brought it to my attention because of, you know, my my long standing habit of you know, speaking out on behalf of people that are being abused in power, um, or by those in power, I mean. Um, and, you know, as I started to dig into it, I, I really, there were so many reactions, uh, you know, the, there's the, there's the just first level of, dude, why are you putting all of this in writing? But then there's, you're attacking staff. And I have very strong feelings about how we treat staff. You know, I, I just, you know, how you treat the people that, that do the support work tells me who you are completely. So, so that piece w was bad enough. Then I get to the part about, you know, his constituents. And I can't even imagine, you know, I, and, and one, I, I responded to somebody's tweet about that, that, you know, I spent a good bit of time during the pandemic helping my constituents get their firearm owner's ID cards expedited because the state police had such a backlog. Now, anybody who's ever looked at my legislative record knows I am one of the strongest supporters of gun control in the state, and I have the hate mail to prove it. But you're my constituent. I work for you. You need help accessing state services. I am on it. And and so the idea that that he would you know try to refuse services to constituents who he disagreed with was was mind boggling. So there were these layers of horrified <laughs> that I that I I hit um, as as I dug through it. Um, you know, there are folks who who suggested that you know I'm I'm trying to help a candidate. I I, I don't know anybody that's running. I, I know I've heard names now since, but I've never met any of these folks that that are talking about running, and and I may never meet them. This is about pointing out that this person who represents my party as a committee person, he's a fellow committee person, um, is is exhibiting this behavior and taking these actions that run counter to the, the, um, the, the philosophy of our party and who we want to be. Then you add on his endorsement of judges who actively seek to overturn Roe, and you're once again uh, in, in, you know, at cross purposes to our party. Um, and you know, anyone you know, referencing back to our conversation about, about the Texas Act, you know, the, 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 the right has been methodical and brilliant in seating our courts at every level with the folks that they need to be in place now. They, they've been doing it for the better part of a lifetime, putting folks into this, into this pipeline, into the judiciary. They're now landing where they intended for them to land and doing the work they intended for them to do in, in overturning Roe. And, and so, you know, for some to suggest, you know, who cares about his endorsement of a candidate for circuit court judge? I care. I care very deeply about that. 
because that's what we're dealing with now at the federal level. And that's my life and my body. Well put. I, uh, I, who cares? I can't believe it. People have actually yeah. delivered. I can't even get the words out. <laughs> Who cares? That's, a, that's such a Chicago response. Uh, it's well, a knee-jerk response. because we don't take judicial elections seriously yeah. because we make it impossible to. But that's another topic for another show. That's another topic for another time. But what I'm saying is that a typical Chicago response is if if there's a contentious issue that and someone doesn't know what position to take because you're going to alienate somebody on one side or the other, I've noticed this over the years. A typical yeah. Chicago response is to say, I don't care. Who cares? Yeah. yeah. I, it's, I'm getting this right now, by the way, with, with Rahm Emanuel being uh, appointed, uh, nominated to be ambassador to Japan. I care very much about it. Uh, I, I'm advocating against it. I know I probably lose because Rahm's got more power in the Democratic Party than I do. But I get this response from people who don't want to take a stand. They go, well, who cares? I'm like, so well, on that one, I'm getting a lot more of not not so much who cares, but why don't they just want him to be halfway across the world? <laughs> <laughs> That's the strongest argument. If <laughs> I would have totally supported him if in 20, 2010, around September of 2010, Barack Obama had appointed had nominated Rom to be the ambassador to Japan, he would have no stronger supporter to sending Rom to Japan. <laughs> Do you imagine how the world would be differently <laughs> if, if, if they had done that? We wouldn't have had Mayor Rahm. Just think about that for a moment, Kelly Cassidy. Anyway, <laughs> all right, we're going to close with your defense and explanation. Let's, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking forward to this as to why Marcus Evans defeated her for the coveted worst voting record of the year uh, as given out by the, what do they call the American Conservative Union, some yes. far right outfit. And um, so everybody thinks of uh, Kelly Cassidy as sort of the leftist in the state rep, or at least far left. She's uh, from Rogers Park. It doesn't get much leftier than that. And uh, and yet, you have a higher ranking. I think you voted with, I think it's, I'm doing something top of my head, 14%. It was 10%. It was 10%, it was, my bad. Which was a drop from last year, um, apparently. Um, so I, they sent this out to us with a, a, an announcement of who, who's getting the awards for the most conservative uh, voting records. And, you know, we're listed in a section called the Coalition of the Radical Left. So I did reply to the email and ask if there was an award for <laughs> um, leading the Coalition of the Radical Left. I haven't heard back from them yet. But um, so, the, the, you know, earlier I talked about being so far left, sometimes I reach around and, and you know, can, can reach the folks on the right. Yeah. I vote with libertarians sometimes on deregulation type things. Uh, one, of the, one of the bills that, that I got um, a, a thumbs up from them for was um, the, the cocktails to go and deregulating uh, access to cocktails to go. So, so there are things that I'm happy and proud to have voted for that they count as a good thing. That, and that's what puts me in the 14% realm or the 10% realm. Um, but you know, folks like Marcus Evans and Stephanie Kipowit and a few others that, that got zeros. I'm, I'm a little, uh, I'm, I'm, I definitely am throwing the bullshit flag on that one. Um, <laughs> well, maybe we will have a debate. We'll bring Marcus Evans on. You can ask him. I, I'm I actually love living him. What's that? I, I love him. Marcus and I are really good friends. I would love to come on with him. It would be a blast. All right. We'll, we'll work out. I'll, I'll make that happen. And then we guys can fight over who really is the leftiest of the lefty. <laughs> uh, I can't remember the. I, you know what? I can't remember the cocktail legislation. What cocktails to go. It was so, allowing, it was, it was removing restrictions on uh, liquor license holders from, um, serving alcohol and containers to go it was a pandemic response um did it to, pass to, oh it did it did and so marcus was one of the people who voted against it or maybe he wasn't there that day ah, they, 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 there were there there were things marked you know not vote, that they didn't vote either so it's possible he got a zero percent because he wasn't there to vote for it um well, uh you mentioned libertarians i'm going to close by tra uh, trashing them uh, I would have a lot more respect for libertarians if I saw them on the front line of the war against the war on drugs. They were totally non-existent and uh, AWOL uh, in, in that war. 
uh, something Kelly Cassie and I know a lot about because we've talked so much about legalizing marijuana over the years. And they are utterly worthless when it comes to uh, women's right to choose. Absolutely. Which, and, and, and I will say, like, I get I get more help from them on the on the decrim, on the drug stuff and on the, the criminal justice reform stuff generally. Um, but I get zero response yeah. on, on, you know, why is why is my uterus an open season when nothing else is? So, yeah, yeah there, there, there's there's a lot of hypocrisy there. No question. All right, Kelly Cassidy, thank you so much for coming on the show um, and uh, keep up the good work. I'm going to follow that legislation as when you introduce it. And let's see if the American uh, Conservative Union and the Libertarians join with you uh, in that legislation. uh, There's always room at my table. All right. Very good. Uh, Kelly Cassidy, thank you so much. We're going to take a break. When we come back, David Weiss will be with us. Stay with us. Thanks, y'all. Good to see everybody. Take care, Kelly. Commercial break over. Welcome back to the Ben Jarofsky Show, live from his attic. Uh, with this special election uh, in the state of California, I decided we should, the time had come to turn to our special correspondent in Los Angeles. Uh, this guy is on retainer from the Ben Jarofsky Show, and uh, he covers... Walter the- Crankite. <laughs> Walter Cranky. Crankite. <laughs> uh, David Weiss. And uh, so, David, welcome back to the show. You look fit as a Thank fiddle. You. Uh, yeah. And so let me remind listeners uh, that David Weiss was on the show. I forget uh, when, but he was talking about how he was kicked off of Facebook. Usually uh, it's the QAnon people who get kicked off. <laughs> no, they don't. That's the <laughs> <laughs> but David Weiss, a filmmaker extraordinaire, uh, and oh, he used to live in Chicago back in the 80s. And before that, he's from Cleveland, folks. Yeah, he's from Cleveland, Ohio. We'll talk a little slower. Uh, and, um, boy, that one went right over his head. Anyway, uh, so he's uh, now in L.A. And uh, so before we get to um, all the other things you want to talk about, I have a whole list of them, uh, David Weiss. Uh, are you back on fa- – yes, you are back on Facebook uh, had there been any more moments where they kicked you off, suspended yes. you? Yes. I missed that. Yeah, after the last time we talked, I got kicked off again for another 30 days. 
And this time it was because some woman posted something about Biden that was ridiculous. And I said, go F yourself. And she reported me for harassing and bullying her. And so all of the good little brown shirts at Facebook decided to take her word for it and took me off again. But I'm back. All right. Let's let's address this before we get to the California special election. They may all be tied together. So if I may play sort of devil's advocate with you, uh, what is the difference between you complaining about uh, the censorship of Facebook and a QAnon supporter or a, uh, a MAGA person complaining about censorship at Facebook? Take it away, David Weiss. Oh, I, I don't think there's any difference, meaning, you know, it's it's called freedom of speech. Um, I don't believe anything that QAnon says. I don't think they should be allowed to say anything that they say because it's detrimental to people's health, to the country, but they're allowed to. I mean, the Nazis were able to protest in Skokie. Did we want them there? No, nope. but welcome to America. So no, there's no difference between them and I asking for it. It's just me telling someone to go F themselves is not quite the same as, you know, these guys telling people they should drink horse detergent. <laughs> whatever the hell it is yeah. so that's the the difference is is what's behind it but no we both have a right to say what we want and facebook should not be the ones deciding who can and cannot say anything that's even though it's even though it's their company it's a private company uh, yeah, but they opened up the town crier in the town square. So, yeah, I guess they do because they're a private company. But you know what? Who are you to say what's right and what's wrong? You know, then they should come out and make their own statement about well, how they think the world should work. And then none of us will waste our time on there because we won't like what they say. Do you know what I mean? But they don't. They just say, here you go. Here's a page. Start talking. But then you slip up and you say the wrong thing or you call somebody the wrong thing. I mean, I got kicked off once for calling somebody white trash. Okay, then are you a website for only white trash people? You know what I mean? At a certain point, you either got to let it go or tell me what I can't do. Yeah. And by the way, the and there's no recourse. Sorry. And, and what pisses me off is there's no recourse. They write you and they say, well, if you contest this, you can let us know. And so you, you barely find a way to write back to them and they go, okay, thank you. No, you're off. <laughs> Facebook. No, it's not a court of appeals. It's like No, it's not. Yeah, so, but then don't, don't tell me I can appeal because yeah. you're not going to listen to what I have to say. No, I, 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 I completely see your larger point that there's a tremendous inconsistency uh, and Facebook has made gazillions of dollars allowing people to put whatever they want on there. And now suddenly they're trying to figure out uh, how to be more or less responsible while they see the results of allowing anybody to put anything they want on there. Uh, right. and, and they, they're the ones that help get Trump elected. And yes, they, they did, did it because they were making money. Yes. They didn't care about Donald Trump, or maybe they did. I don't know. I don't care. I don't know what. I don't think Mark Zuckerberg cares about anything except for Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Well, there is a uh, one of his top aides who is a, a Republican was the one sitting behind him when when Zuckerberg uh, talked before. Well, I think it was the Senate subcommittee. Yeah. But uh, all right, what was it that the lady said that pissed you off so much about Biden? Do you remember? I, I don't remember. It was it, it was usually what they just say now. If you look at a lot of the posts from people, is he's ruining the country. And so you write back because okay, usually I don't waste my time because it's like <laughs> arguing physics with a rock, right? I don't waste my time. So, you know, they say something and you go, okay, he's ruining the country. Please let me know how. And their response is, well, he's the worst president. To which then I go say, go F yourself. Meaning if you want to argue with me and tell me why you think he's ruining the country, if you think, if I think you're correct, I'll go, huh. You're right. Maybe we should change that. But they don't have anything. They just, he's ruining the country. Okay, go F yourself because there's nothing else to say. Like you would just, if you were arguing rock, physics with the rock, you'd just throw the rock away. Because <laughs> yeah. there's no point talking to the rock anymore. Yeah. I have no idea what that metaphor means. I don't know, but it was pretty funny. <laughs> throw the rock away. Hope you don't hit anybody when you throw it. Uh, all right. So it's the, uh, the day, finally. The election day in California, their uh, attempt to recall Gavin Newsom. Um, I've thought about this and written about it, talked about it um, all over the map in terms of Gavin Newsom. Well, I'm not really all over the map. I, 
I, I can't even articulate what I'm trying to say now. It's so frustrating. Uh, Gavin Newsom brought this on himself for some outrageous hypocritical behavior, in my humble opinion. Okay. All right. Are we talking about the time that he went to the restaurant? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Fine. Right. That's one time. Was it stupid? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but really, we're going to hold him up to the same level of recourse on that when we didn't do anything for Trump, when he basically molested women. So I'm like, okay, I get it. Newsom did that. That was really stupid. Name me something else he did or something else he's done to ruin the state. And the list gets really short at that point. So yeah, should he have done that? No, idiot. But recall him? They wanted to recall him anyway. Yeah. So they just used that as an excuse. That's all. But yeah. they wanted him out. They want him out because you know what? Republicans. Okay, sorry. Now I'm going to go all California. Go. Republicans have wanted for years to turn this state into six states. Okay, mm-hmm. one state would be San Francisco. One state would be Los Angeles, and the other four would be would be Alabama, Alabama <laughs> West. <laughs> Because once you get outside of the cities here, you are in Alabama and California. Yeah. People don't understand that. It's West Virginia. It's Alabama. So they want six states because then they know California, you know, San Francisco and Los Angeles are going to vote blue no matter what. They get the other four states, which means they get eight senators. So they've wanted to break this state up because – but we're also – we're a blue state just because we have two of the biggest cities. But we're not a blue state. I, I'm seriously, you can go 20 minutes from my house and I'm, I'm the wrong color white, you know? So it's, it, people don't really understand this state. It's huge and it isn't just blue. And they've wanted to turn the whole thing red as much as they can for years. They did it with Gray Davis. That's how we got the freaking Terminator as our <laughs> governor. Yeah. You know, and now, and now, I mean, we're going to get the black, Trump is governor if Democrats don't wake up. All right. So I, uh, anyway, sorry. No, that was a great, uh, you're absolutely you correct. understand this state. It's, yeah. And, uh, and uh, that, that's the political reality. Uh, they were looking for the Republicans. I, we just finished talking about this with Kelly Cassie, our previous guest. Uh, we, we, she was mentioning that many uh, Democrats say they're fatigued, they're tired of the fight. And I pointed out, it seems like Republicans never tire of the fight. No, and, no, they don't. They, they don't. And I'm sorry, but look, when my son was old enough to vote, he's 25 now. The first thing I said to him, I said, look, you're going to go vote. Let me explain to you something. Old, scared, stupid white people vote wrong and they vote every single time. And there's more of us. And if you don't outvote them, you get Donald Trump or you get Larry Elder. Democrats are lazy. I blame the Democrats for what happened and and Bernie supporters the other day on Facebook for what happened in Texas. You know, Bernie supporters, and I was a Bernie supporter, and I was pissed off at the Democrats, but I knew what was going to happen. If Hillary had been president, and I don't care what you think of Hillary, Texas would not have even written that law. But Democrats stayed home or they whined, they didn't let Bernie win or whatever the hell their excuse was. I don't like Hillary. Well, that's great. So you gave us Trump, and he picked three judges from the seventh century. <laughs> and that's what we have now. And wait it's a minute, hold. Democrats and independents who are smart are lazy. Okay, wait. You, there's you've you've had two accusations there. So let's pick them apart. One, uh, Democrats are lazy, and two, lazy. Uh, Bernie supporters uh, don't have good judgment. So there's are no, two separate No, no, issues. no, 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 no. I didn't say Bernie support. I was a Bernie supporter. I was a Bernie supporter. What I said about Bernie supporters is when he when it was stolen from him. And I do think the Democrats look. I hate the Democrats for what they did to Bernie. I was a Bernie supporter, but once that happened, yeah, you had to go vote for Hillary. Okay, so, so that's I don't not say laziness. They have bad that's, judgment. Uh, well. It is effectively lazy. saying that it's an excuse. It's an excuse. To oh, so you're saying they just they were just they just didn't vote because they were lazy and they said, oh, they, they don't vote. like Hillary. I got it. Okay. Right. Well, right. They just, you know, my vote. guy didn't win. I'm taking my ball and going home. And again, I would vote for Bernie tomorrow. And I think he was robbed. 
But the choice became Hillary or Trump, and we now have three Neanderthal judges who are saying it's okay for women to have a bounty on their head. That's what you get when you're a Democrat and you're lazy, which is why I told my son that old, stupid white people vote wrong, but they vote every single time. Now, now, David, I'm just going to make one uh, distinction. Uh, yes. And yes, I, ben. you said that uh, if Bernie's supporters had turned out uh, uh, for Hillary in 2016, she would have won, uh, and uh, that Texas law wouldn't be there. I still think the Republicans would have pushed for that law, but what wouldn't have happened to, is that there wouldn't have been three Donald Trump appointees on the Supremes to essentially ratify it. Go ahead. Well, of course, but that's my point is they, they would have known, Texas would have known that. Of course they would have tried just because they're freaking backwoods idiots, but they know they wouldn't have gotten anywhere. They, they still would have tried. They, yeah, yeah, of course they yeah. would have, but they know they would have gotten nowhere. Now they knew right away, if we do this now, it's over. And so now there is a state with a bounty on women's heads. And we, and I'm sorry, I blame all of us, let that happen. We let that happen. Republicans always vote. They are never tired of the fight, ever, 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 ever. Democrats can be babies and whiners and lazy, (laughs) but we outnumber them. And you you can't say oh i want this and i want that and i don't want this and then not vote how come biden went guess what democrats woke up they came out and voted but now we have yet another test here in this state and i don't you know i don't know california democrats can be really lazy cuz we're laying on the beach and surfing and <laughs> looking at the girls go by <laughs> no i okay now we're so, getting into the uh I, I i struggle with this because i don't um want to apply all the lessons i've learned about chicago voters to every state in the union and uh so but chicago voters are let's put it mildly aren't always paying attention and i like to tease them no. all the time uh, and they've elected some really lousy mayors, uh, and then uh, they don't and they don't pay attention to like the the laws and the rules that govern politics. Uh, I remember having a conversation. We have a runoff system for mayor, uh, and so Rom won the first round. Uh, he won a plurality of the vote in the first round, but because he didn't win a majority, he was in a runoff. And I remember voters telling me, "Wait, didn't I already vote?" Like they didn't even know there was a runoff. So okay, <laughs> you know, it's like, and his vote counts as much as his mine. So, it is unfair of me to apply the same attitude toward California voters as I applied it to Chicago voters, which is, you can't assume they follow what's going on. You can't assume they know the rules. And in the case of California, can you assume that they know if they like Gavin Newsom, do they understand that a no vote? is the vote you have to make if you like Gavin Newsom. Because it's counterintuitive, David Weiss. It is. It is. I get, okay. Look, I get it. You're right. And I think there's too many stupid voters. But I do think people understand that. But let me tell you how screwed up California is. Like, you talk about you talk about uh, Chicago voters. And you're right. Probably just like voters everywhere. They don't pay enough attention. They don't understand their vote matters. And they don't always vote right. But think of what we did in California. The reason we have this recall election is because there's this law, and I forget if it's been around for 100 years, whatever it is, where, gee, the citizens of this state should have the right to put a recall election up if they get enough votes, or they should be able to put a ballot issue if they don't like gay marriage. So these same stupid people that aren't smart enough to vote every year and figure it out can write propositions and try to recall a governor in this state. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, okay. They, they, so, they legally, citizens in this state can legally do it. And it's something that's needed to go for a really long time because people are not, they're not even smart enough to vote. How are they smart enough to then go, well, we don't like that. We're going to put, we're going to get gay marriage out. All right. So here I am going to do something that I never thought I would do. I'm going to defend the voters of the state of California and I'm going to defend a recall. Now, the principle of a recall, I'm not certain I'm against that uh, in and of itself, but 
the the insanity of the California law is beyond um, justification, in my humble opinion. In California, follow me on this, ladies and gentlemen. I know my listeners uh, know what's going on by and large, but just in case some don't, there's two questions. One, should we recall our sitting governor, in, in this case, Gavin Newsom? So that's why the no vote is essentially a vote uh, in support Ford of Gavin, Gavin Newsom. Newsom. Right. Then, if, okay, so you would think that th- there would be that matter. That, and then then there's a second question. If we are going to recall Gavin Newsom, who do you support? And that's Should the part where I'm like. clowns. Yes. <laughs> the 64 <laughs> clowns running. Ballot. It was unbelievable. <laughs> so many names. I think, I think there's a monkey running on it. <laughs> so. Uh, no, you're right. It, the way it, yeah. you're. Okay. I, I, I'll backtrack a little bit and say, mm-hmm. yes, I do appreciate that voters can can have their say and find ways to do it but the system in place here is ridiculous because yeah. basically what will happen today i mean everything says gavin's gonna win okay fine but we all know trump was gonna lose too right but basically what happens today is if he doesn't get 50 percent of the yes vote meaning i'm sorry the no vote <laughs> see what i'm saying 50 percent of the no vote yeah. then the next person the top person in the list of 64 clowns that are running becomes governor and they will have gotten less votes than he got no votes and less yes. votes than he got as governor so yes Absolutely. you are yeah there's two things you're right but it, I, I just yeah. don't i don't want to give an an ignorant Elect, elector, electorate that we have in this country too much power. I would rather be teaching them civics again and other things so that they start to understand our process, understand their vote matters, and then they can vote smartly. But nobody does. They just they vote for the TV clown for president because they know his face. You know, I, it's just it's ridiculous. All We're right. So, in your humble push. opinion, uh, did the Repub- did the Democrats of California air? by not having a backup plan. So I've had this conversation with uh, many people throughout uh, the last few months. So the way the Democrats have gone, they've gone all whole in for uh, Gavin Newsom. They're urging people vote no on the first question. And with the idea, if we they get more than 50% of a no, they get fit, no's win by with more than 50%, they don't have to worry about the second question. So they don't have a Democratic candidate, a well-known Democrat, as a backup in case the yeses actually prevail. I've been a little, this is the part about the calculation that I don't, uh, don't quite agree with. Uh, your thoughts on this, David Weiss? Well, Ben Jarofsky, <laughs> I think that the Democrats, what is the point of having a plan B? Because if the lead Democrat who won by millions of votes when he was elected the first time can't get 50 percent of the no vote, what makes you think that the so, so then Democrats didn't vote? What makes you think that the next person in line is going to be a Democrat? Does that make sense? Oh, I'll tell you what makes me think. Just what you said before. I'll tell you what makes me think. This is what makes me think that. Because right now, the way it's going to work, if he loses, if yes prevail, uh, Newsom will have gotten, I bet he, it'll be very close. So he will have gotten at least close to 50% of the vote, uh, the total vote that came out, okay? Larry Elder, who is leading in the polls right now, the the far right wing talk show host, will probably, according to the polls, uh, prevail in the beauty contest. of Who do you want to be our governor if you vote yes? All right. By default. Uh, So with about he'll get maybe 20 percent of the vote. I have to believe. That if I put David Weiss in there with the, oh, the no. D, <laughs> well, <laughs> you get a lot of conservative my, vote with my that wife wouldn't vote. even vote for me. <laughs> so I put any I, yeah. any Democrat would get more votes than Larry Elder. I have to believe that. No, no, because those people would have already voted for Newsom. Because they already voted once for Newsom. Why would they suddenly just go, yeah, those Republicans are right. We should get rid of them. Let's vote for the Democratic monkey they put in the list. No, no I don't think that would ever I, happen. I think I, this is where yeah, maybe I have too much uh, confidence in the California voter. I think the, California, I, I think the California voter could figure out that 
vote. This is vote no on recall and then vote for the backup. In fact, yeah. they just call the guy. Let's say his name is Billy Jones. It should be Billy Backup Newsom Jones. I, <laughs> Billy. I understand what you're saying. I just hey, you got to keep think. it simple for the voters of California. Okay. Well, I agree that it's a mess what we're doing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Should be Gavin. You know, they just should have waited another year. I mean, that's the other thing. If the black Trump gets in, he's going to be there for about nine and a half months, which on one hand you go, well, that's good. But on the other hand, he can dismantle everything in this state in an hour. Yeah. And will. Well, yeah. He is uh, really insane. He's a lunatic. Yeah, he's a lunatic. So, someday uh, you should look. I don't. I wish I had it somewhere, but you should find the old interview he did when they asked him about reparations. No, I saw that. I've seen it all. I did the deep yeah. dive last weekend yeah, the rep- where he started defending the rights of slave owners. We talked slave about it on the show last week. Uh, and so, uh, no, Tom he's Elder. so Tom Elder is running. Uh, all right. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, so uh, when you voted and you voted early, am oh, I correct shoot. in that? The, I'm supposed to vote. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you voted f- no, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you vote in the second part of the election? Did you vote for any of the sixty-four candidates? No, you don't. You, you, you. In theory, you shouldn't. But in practice, you're allowed to. You're allowed to, sure. No, no, I didn't vote. What? It, well, I'm gonna vote Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Just for a joke to give her 11 <laughs> votes. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, seriously, I, I just, <laughs> yeah. I, it is a clown car of candidates. Okay. <laughs> it, it's just, you know, again, if, you know, it goes back to what I said about Republicans on Facebook, you can complain to me all you want about Newsom, but a one, tell me what he did wrong. And two, tell me what you would do differently. And they can never do that. None of them. So they just don't like Newsom. Why? Because he made him wear a mask. Yeah. You whiny little bitches. You just wear wear a mask. So that's and really our economy is back actually better than this than the United States in general. Our economy is back. So again, they don't this has nothing to do with facts or knowledge or thought or anything it's get rid of the democrat because he made us wear a mask and we don't care if we get a monkey or a transvestite or whoever we don't care it this is this is the stupidity that our country has come to and unfortunately everybody thinks oh california is this liberal mansion no no we are home to all of this crap we just look good (laughs) we just got good weather but you actually don't have great weather anymore. You have, no. uh, well, all right. Oh, is that climate change? That's right. Yeah, which is not existing. If you believe in that thing. So you talked, uh, we were talking before the show, you were saying that you see a connection or correlation between the special uh, recall election in California and uh, the anti-vaxxer movement. And I said, save it for the show and explain what you're getting at uh, when you're with me uh, talking for everyone to listen. So well, explain the ca- connection. Go ahead. You've got all of these right wing people. I don't even think some of them are right wing. Some of them are just, I, I don't know, uh, Nazi, whatever they are. All all of this outlying people that just do not want the government to interfere with our lives. Right. So if you make me do anything that's going against what I think is my right, unless, of course, it's abortion, because then it's OK if the government, you know, if you're a woman, then we don't give a shit what the government does to them. But, you know, if you're going to make me wear a mask or I can't I can't have my gun on my hip or I can't have any of these things, then I'm going to vote you out because I want those things. So there's no more caring about, well, gee, if I wear a mask, that would take care of somebody else. Or if there were smart gun control, that would maybe get the the guns out of people's hands. No, they just, you're, my government's coming after me. And so this all, I mean, it started long before Trump, but Trump brought it out into the light that these kind of people are out there. And so they're like, well, just get rid of that guy because he made me wear a mask. Well, guess what? Larry Elder comes in more of you are going to die. So you don't think it through. So they're all the same. All of these lunatics are just, you know, don't tread on me. 
And guess who? All of these people, all of these you don't tread on me, these anti-masks, they're the ones dying from COVID. Mother Nature has a wonderful way of thinning the herd of political lunatics. But well, they don't believe in science. They don't believe yeah. so it's just I mean, it's 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 just this attitude that whatever I don't like, I'm gonna go after. And they don't think about what that means. Well, it's a it's a very powerful force, I must concede. And uh, it caught me off guard. I, I'm trying to come up with a logic to the the strong anti-vaxxer movement when Don't. it comes to there isn't uh, any. There's none. There's yeah. no logic whatsoever. There's none. And guess what? I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but most of these people that are anti-vaxxers, ask them to roll up their sleeve a little bit and see if they have that little pot mark on them from when they were a kid and they got smallpox and all those other things. Because back then they went, well, if you don't take the shot, you're going to die. And we went, oh, okay, I'll take that shot. <laughs> and they all have it. And yeah. now you know what? And now their kids are dying and it doesn't even matter. Well, how long do you think the Republican Party, the leaders of the Republican Party, will resist, uh, will, will champion them? And I'll give you an example. Forever. Uh, well, let me give you my example. And then you're, uh, uh, D David Weiss loves the Chicago Cubs for a reason I'll never understand. Uh, and the Cubs are currently owned by the Ricketts family, one of whom is the governor of Nebraska. I love to tell Cubs fans this, that whenever they support the Cubs, they're effectively I subsidizing the, I, I, the Trump empire. Uh, but Governor Ricketts, Pete Ricketts, I just read a quote from him, and uh, he's kind of in – he's like – one of these Republican governors who's sort of trying to dance around this issue. So uh, he, I believe, has the vax. Uh, he took the shot, but he, he doesn't vaccinated. want to. Yeah, he don't, not a complete idiot. Uh, anyway, so he's, he's just a hypocrite. Uh, so he got the vaccine, but he's saying, I don't think everybody should have to get the vaccine. It should be a matter of personal choice. This is what he says. And then he says he's trying to draw a distinction between people back in the day who uh, got, let's say, uh, a polio shot uh, with people today who are resisting. And his argument is, well, they had more time. The government didn't uh, impose it. I don't know. He made it up as he went along when he said this, but they had more time. to. So how long do you think the Pete Ricketts of the world will bow to the extreme views of the anti-vaxxers uh, in the Republican Party? Go ahead. Forever. Because that's who votes for them. Well, why would they go against them? I mean, look at Asa Hutchinson down in Arkansas. No, you really should get a shot. Boo, boo. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's a choice. You should do it. Can't even stand up. And let, let me just, I'm going to, this is one of my, this is a David Weissism. If Donald Trump, and as much as I hate that guy, the Ricketts are number two. Trump's still number Actually, Mitch McConnell's number one. But if Donald Trump, the minute, the minute that they knew this COVID-19 and what it could do had gone on TV and said, everybody, you should wear a mask. We're going to make a vaccine, and this vaccine is going to take care of you. There'd be maybe 400,000 more people alive, and he'd be president today. All they care about is getting to stay in power to keep getting votes, so they'll stay with it forever. They don't believe in it. Every one of those people, everybody on Fox News, every Republican in power has been vaccinated. Or even on top of being vaccinated, if they got sick, they got all the, the right medicine that you and I can't get. So the hypocrisy just, and you know what? The only way to get them out is to have their voters die, and Mother Nature's taking care of that. Well, I don't think we could depend on Mother Nature in this one. Uh, I got to tell you right now, as and I'm an old geezer, uh, I, the I, I, I'm worried about where you never know uh, the mutations of the virus. Uh, we started bowling yeah. last night. My bowling league. So I'm wearing a mask. Everybody's got a shot. And I'm, I'm still, and I'm talking to this one guy. He goes, yeah, I got it. Uh, it was a breakthrough virus. I got it. He's wearing his mask because he's telling me this. We're all good citizens, you know, wearing our masks. And um, so I realized, you know, 
maybe the next version of this disease uh, will have greater success or luck or whatever, how you want to phrase it, against yes, it, it, the vaccination. So it is a scary thing. And of I course can't, it is. Yeah. But sorry, but that's why, you know what? The reason it keeps mutating is because people keep getting it because they won't get vaccinated. You know, but these same people that don't want to be vaccinated and don't want to wear a mask also don't believe in evolution. Guess what? The virus does. <laughs> the virus does not give a shit what you think about anything. Yeah. And people just can't get it through their heads. And I'm going to tell you, if one more person gets interviewed on TV on their deathbed going, oh, I wish I'd have taken that shot. No. Die. I'm sorry. Just die. You've done your damage to this country. You are you are. And think of the I mean. I guess we should have known this country was off the deep end when 26 year old kids were killed in Sandy Hook and we couldn't do anything about that. But think of all of these kids that are dying now from this COVID. And the only reason they're dying is because the people around them will not get vaccinated, wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And we still don't care. Well, I, now that'll That's be us. interesting. Yeah. No, I, by That's the way, us. I, you mentioned Sandy Hook and you mentioned uh, the fights over regulating guns, the sale of guns, and the fact that the NRA uh, has been able to resist pretty much any attempt to seriously regulate uh, the sale of guns in our country. Uh, and they, they've blocked a bill that would hold gun manufacturers liable for the carnage of they course. cause, which is perhaps where the money the, comes from. All right. So, um, I really, that's to me, I've been thinking about this, that's the parallel I see with the anti-vax movement. And there's like an arrogance. You talk about Democrats being uh, ultimately lazy and wanting to go into the beach uh, and not wanting to, to vote, getting fatigued after one presidential one election. Time. I'm tired. Oh. Uh, I got four years. I could see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's kind of a, uh, an arrogance to, or a, take kind of out of there's an arrogance to the Republicans. Yeah, there is. That's uh, and how they, they feel. Yeah. And they feel like they created a, uh, a liberty and they're uh, a right, like a sacred right. And then they champion that right. Uh, and that becomes a cause, whether it makes sense or all, whether it are consistent in the application of rights. And um, yeah, they rally around it. So it, it gets them. Victorious voted, remember, guns, it just think, gets them. What's that? It gets them voted back in. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for their constituents. These people vote against their own best interests every single time. But it keeps Republicans in power, and they all have money, and they all have the shots, and they all ain't getting sick. Yeah. And people yeah. just can't wake up. Yeah. All right. Um, so we'll close with a, uh, a bright prediction, an optimistic prediction uh, from our uh, correspondent, in sunny California, <laughs> You're will Gavin Newsom prevail yes. uh, in this recall? Yes. Will it be close or will we know tonight at approximately midnight Chicago time? Well, I, I, I will tell you why. I, I mean, I do just in general think he will win, but I will tell you why I think it will not be close. That's because already yesterday, Larry Elder and his team came out with there's fraud in the election. They've already started that course because they know they're going to get their asses kicked and they've already started putting that out there. So that's the other reason I know Gavin, they know that they're going to lose. Big yeah. Time. So that's not, that's yeah. So that, that's why you say it's not going to be a close election. It's okay. not going to be close yeah, because they're, they're right. already freaking, they're already freaking out yeah. and knowing he's going to get kicked. No. That's I mean, the, I, the only, the only, I'll tell you, besides Newsom getting reelected, the only thing that would make me feel any better and made sure that this $260 million we wasted in this election was worth it is if Caitlyn Jenner got more votes than Larry L. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. That would have made it all. Well, you could have voted. You could have voted. You could have had a, not, a hand in that. No, I don't take no risks because I know I live among stupid people. No, what I'm saying is you could have voted the second part. I know All right, I I'm going to let that one go. Uh, David Weiss and I have been known to carry on debates for years and years. The man used to live in Chicago. I knew him back in the 80s. Young man, uh, David Weiss, back in the 1980s. 
I was drunk then. It wasn't as yeah. easy to formulate ideas. Uh, but you're sober now. All right, uh, David Weiss, we're going to take that prediction. Of, I'm taking that prediction to Vegas, along with your prediction that the Chicago White Sox will be the champions of uh, baseball, uh, and your prediction that my beloved Chicago Bulls uh, will win the championship as well. Um, I, ooh, I, don't know. <laughs> I think you're one for two on those. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're one for two on those, yeah. which isn't bad. You're batting 500 on that. Yeah, I'll take that. All right, David, thank you so much, and I right. uh, appreciate you taking the time to come talk to us right. uh and i also rant. and i also want to thank kelly cassidy state representative kelly cassidy uh our guest earlier in the show and of course i want to thank the man the myth the legend the pride of joy of alton illinois without whom the show would be possible and as david weiss will tell you back home in alton they call him white lightning give yourself a raise take it out of petty cash see you tomorrow everybody Bye.